Yesterday at 6.45 p.m., a Kamaz lumbered across the rain-slick road along the Donuts River. The driver squinted into the storm, unaware of eyes watching him from miles away. In less than a minute, 12 small Ukrainian hobby drones, costing a combined $6,000, would turn his 20-truck convoy and an entire multi-million dollar Russian offensive into a smoking ruin. This wasn't a chance, it was a trap calibrated 72 hours earlier. While foreign leaders argued about escalation, Ukrainian engineers decided not to wait. The convoy carried the fuel and ammunition for three Russian divisions pushing towards the Pork's front. If destroyed, it would cripple their advance and save 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers from being surrounded. Ukraine moved in silence, guided by intelligence, patience, and the weather itself. Satellite tracks, reconnaissance drones, and storm models combined into a near-perfect 3D map of the river corridor. They logged every curve, every choke point, every bridge. Where others saw mud and fog, they saw opportunity. Russia ignored the weather. Ukraine weaponized it. The storm would hide an attack, confuse sensors, and drown any chance of escape. The battlefield would be land, air, and nature itself. On paper, the convoy was untouchable. A state-of-the-art Pantsir S-1 sat sentinel. All and 10 S scanned above, and trained crews watched the road. But paper doesn't fight in the rain. The terrain was treacherous. Hills, low clouds, near zero visibility. The real question was simple. How could anyone strike without being obliterated first? At 6.40 p.m., the operation began. Banshee 7 dropped beneath the tree line like a whispered threat. Its camera feed streaked with rain as it buzzed barely 30 feet above muddy ground. It wasn't military grade. It was a $420 racing drone built in a garage, fitted with an AI navigation chip that read wind patterns and guided itself through chaos. In a cold bunker miles away, the 22-year-old engineer who had built it stared at his monitors. His voice was calm. Swarm synchronization, 12 of 12 online. On his screen, 12 green blips skittered across the map, a deadly hornet cloud. Inside the Pantsir cabin, an operator frowned at a single dot flashing on his radar. He zoomed, not a bird, not a plane. One became two, then five, then 12. The radar flared like a smashed Christmas tree. The system's automated threat analysis began to stutter, trying to classify objects that were too small, too low, and moving too oddly. Pantsir's AI was forged for jets and missiles, not a flock of tiny rain-driven hornets. It was swatting mosquitoes with a cannon. The operator panicked. He switched off the confused AI and took manual control. He locked onto two of the clearest targets and fired. Two missiles, each worth over $100,000, screamed into the storm. Seconds later, distant flashes confirmed two hits. The Russians cheered. They thought they'd just saved the convoy. They had no idea they'd been baited. Those two were decoys, flown a little higher and slower to lure the air defense guns up. While the crew celebrated, the remaining 10 slipped into a radar blind spot behind a hill. The explosions made a glowing curtain of smoke and static that further blinded the sensors. At 6.47 p.m., they vanished from the screen. In the bunker, the engineer's fingers glided across the keyboard. His voice was barely more than a whisper. Swarm. Execute maneuver. Bird dance. This was the heart of the plan. Doppler radars filter out ground clutter, birds, rain, and trees by analyzing movement patterns. A normal drone flies straight. A bird moves erratically, especially in a storm. The Ukrainian team didn't hide from radar. They deceived it. Their drones wobbled, dipped, and weaved like gulls tossed by the wind. Radar only reads weather noise. Confusion inside the Pantsir turned to fear. The operator's gut told him the threat was real. His screen insisted it was just birds. Desperate, he grabbed his radio. Get the A-50 airborne. I need an eye in the sky now. Far away at an airfield in Belgorod, the massive radar jet began taxiing. But the call came too late. At 6.48 p.m., chaos struck the ground. Rain hammered the narrow iron bridge over the donuts. The convoy crawled forward, headlights swallowed by fog. The third truck fishtailed on slick mud. Metal screamed, and it slid sideways into the flood. Its cargo, explosives, and fuel disappeared with it. The bridge groaned. Men shouted over the wind, unaware that the chaos had been timed perfectly. 
Three days earlier, Ukrainian recon drones had scouted this crossing and watched the river rise. Meteorologists had predicted heavy rain. They didn't make the storm, they turned it into a weapon. Fog-blinded optics rained round acoustic sensors, and the swelling river turned the only escape into a trap. High above the storm, a larger six-pound carrier called GOM reached coordinates and unclipped four smaller FPV drones. They spun into life and dove toward the lead truck. At 6.49pm, the operator finally switched to thermal. He found one attacker, Banshee 7, and fired again. The warning alarm shrieked in the bunker. Sam Lock detected! The engineer had less than three seconds. Banshee 7, deploy decoy! He barked. The drone dropped a small pod on a 200-foot tether. It ignited, burning hotter than the drone itself. The missile saw the hotter target and veered, slamming into the decoy. Another $100,000 missile gone. He let out a long breath. The decoy had bought them life. Banshee 7 was still alive and closing. Its mission timer ticked down. At 6.50pm, it struck. The shaped charge pierced the lead truck's fuel tank before detonating inside. That half-second delay made all the difference. Instead of exploding outside, it detonated within the tank, vaporizing the diesel instantly. The fireball was so intense that it ate the front of the bridge. Temperatures soared. The blast wave rolled backward through the convoy, slamming into truck after truck. The second vehicle's ammunition cooked off, triggering a chain reaction. The valley walls funneled the blast like a barrel, pushing wrecks forward. Flaming hulks slid into the river, detonating as they went. Fire and steel filled the gorge. From orbit, satellites watched a column of black smoke climb two miles high. A man-made volcano in the storm. The convoy's front half was gone, twisted metal sinking into the current. The last trucks sat frozen, drivers too terrified to move. Above them, Hornet 12 hovered, recording every moment in 4K. Burning shells detonating, soldiers scrambling up muddy banks, trucks floating like torches. The tally was brutal. 8,000 gallons of fuel gone, 5 tons of ammunition were erased, 40 Russian soldiers fighting for their lives in a river of fire. All was destroyed in 7 minutes. Ukraine hadn't needed million dollar missiles. They used a handful of cheap drones, a forecast, and ingenuity. The front's logistics collapsed for the next 48 hours. In the bunker, the monitor flashed, mission complete, target destroyed. For a beat, there was silence, then cheers. Engineers jumped, hugging and shouting, voices bouncing off concrete. The young operator leaned back, sweat drying on his forehead, and mouthed, Slava Ukraini. The room cracked into a roar. Later analysis showed the destruction was physical and in timing. The internal half-second fuse let the explosion occur inside the tank, vaporizing diesel and creating a pressure wave over 200 psi. The narrow valley focused that blast. Sympathetic detonations followed. Temperatures spiked and the iron bridge supports, baked in the inferno, lost strength and sagged, dumping more of the convoy into the raging current. It was destruction by design, every element of nature turned against its enemy. By dawn, 80% of the convoy was gone. Fuel and ammunition lost, soldiers missing or dead. The A-50 finally reached the scene but could see nothing through the smoke, only a giant heat plume where trucks once stood. The most advanced eyes in Russia's sky had arrived too late. On the ground, special forces and investigators combed the ruins. There were no Ukrainian troops to fight, no intact drones to study, only fragments, mud and ash. Air defense systems had battled ghosts. For two days, Russian communications stuttered as officers tried to understand how cheap drones and a storm had erased a supply column. 500 artillery tubes on the front went silent, not destroyed, but useless without fuel, shells or orders. Morale collapse proved worse than the loss itself. Soldiers whispered that Ukraine had drones that rode the wind, invisible to radar, born from storms. Myths outran reports. The Kremlin's anger followed. How could a $15 million defense system be outwitted by a garage drone and rain? For 48 hours, no replacement convoys moved. Commanders feared the same invisible attack. The offensive that was to crush Ukrainian lines stalled, the rain stopped, the fires smoldered. 
The donuts carried away what remained of the convoy and the illusion of control. Picture the aftermath, a Russian commander staring at a map littered with blackened symbols where trucks used to be. The bridge is gone. Troops are stranded. Putin wants answers. Retreat and face the wrath above or push forward through fire and mud. The question hangs over the ruined valley where, yesterday, a handful of cheap drones and one storm rewrote a slice of the war.